you have to do the best possible drilled barrel holes as fast as you can this is actually mental <laughs> there's trash talk going on now i don't know if, i don't know if anyone was expecting that that was close though that was very difficult to do under pressure like that everything he said about it makes perfect sense but you're not doing it uh, there's no way crew is done is it actually done this it's time actually done it's right there all the audio listeners yeah, currently. So just, if you're listening on audio, jump on YouTube and have a look because it is there. <laughs> currently, just rush into YouTube. Yeah, everyone's to see a sign that says it was in fact not done. <laughs> it, it definitely, definitely is done. I haven't seen it, so I still don't believe this. Yeah, it might be hard to believe for the uh, for the YouTube listeners with the magical editing that I do, but we actually don't see. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't actually. It doesn't yeah. actually. I know it's a up. very, very convincing green screen, but <laughs> yeah. you know what are you yeah. going to do? Well, I said it would be done. When uh, when it was done and it's done, so so yeah. Well, you didn't though, did you? Because you said it was going to be done <laughs> one of the weeks ago. Yeah. So that's just completely incorrect. Yeah, it wasn't done. Now it's done, so it's done. <laughs> you know, I always said it was going to be really late. I always said it was going to be done when it's done. And yeah. it's done. It's not what he said. A wizard arrives exactly when he's supposed to. In the words of the greatest, you wizard, you completely Gandalf. butchered that. He completely butchered. <laughs> don't that. care. Don't care. Use the, use, uh, use the Lord of the Rings. Butchered that. Butchered that to the point where I was going. What is this quote? Who said this? <laughs> I mean, it's Gandalf or someone like that. I yeah, was like, oh, it must, know, be, yeah. must be a Harry Potter thing. That I'm not yeah. Harry Potter? Yeah. Wrong wizard, yeah. mate. Like, you know. Well, you're just a wrong, yeah. wrong quote. That's why. No, it doesn't matter. Same thing. They got the I idea. think, anyway. Yeah. Like, I've, I've thought about it too much now. Yeah. He could, he could be right. He could be spot on right. It's definitely not I've the quote. It. It's definitely not the quote. It's quite, it was in the ballpark. That's close. close. Yeah. No cigar, but close. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, uh, what were we doing hobby-wise last week? Uh, both looking at me, I have done nothing since our last chat. You gave us such an exciting pitch. Like, I'm going to start this army project. Been really thinking about it. Been and busy, then... mate. Yeah. Been busy. I've been away. Oh. Been away. Been busy. Um, did not do a single hobby activity in the last week, unfortunately. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint Definitely everyone. no hack at the end of this episode. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Well, absolutely not. Don't worry, because I've been making some blistering progress, as always, with the Blood Angels. Here comes a leg. No, don't be that. Don't be that ridiculous. I've painted and backpack. Oh. And, and backpack. And backpack. Okay. Well, how many points is that? I don't know. We started dividing that up. <laughs> I'm going to be playing like seven and a half points worth of Blood Angels by the end of the year. So I mean, uh, that's as many models, but in points. So. Slow, slow hobby week. Well, in fairness to me, I'm chipping away at a commission at the minute, doing some Black Templars. So, you know. You know, I, f I feel like, um, you know how they say like ginger cats all share like one brain or something, <laughs> or whatever, the, 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 or one brain cell or something. We're two for like, two on accurate they're, quotes. Because they're, like, they're all like stupid. I feel like we share like one hobby uh Oh, like, so you mean between brain. the three of us, if you add it all up, we make one average hobbyist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like in terms of time put in. I'll take your that. commissions doesn't count because that's work. Yeah. Why does that not count? It doesn't count. work. It's, that's not, that's, that's work. It's, yeah. that's work. It's not hobby yeah. time. So hang on, so I paint like 25 hours a week and you're like, yeah, but that doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. It doesn't yeah. count. Okay. I'm, talking right, about, sure. I'm talking about hobby, uh, like painting for yourself. If you add us all up, we are one hobby painter. <laughs> A marine backpack on a crew that has nothing else because you didn't bring anything to the table doesn't really make a model, though. Yeah, but all together, we have a one model, <laughs> which not, is your still, model. Still <laughs> not, just, so I done all the work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it's but we share like, like <laughs> this then, episode of Paint Perspective brought to you by communism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So a little exciting announcement: we are going to be at UK Games Expo. Mm -hmm. up in sunny Birmingham in the sunny. UK every time I went to Birmingham when I played in bands it rained when it's like, like we got on the M1 and it just the heavens opened I don't know what it is about going to Birmingham and rain right. but they are linked in some way so as you can tell we're very excited um, <laughs> so, well it's indoors it'll be fine it's indoors true yeah Yeah. Uh, so the event is from the 31st of May to the 2nd of June and we will be there for the day on the 1st of June so if you do see us there please do come say hello uh, we're going to be giving out like stickers, little uh, little gift bags, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that'd if be you nice see us, to... just run over. If you see George in particular, just run over to him, just tackle him to the <laughs> ground, and steal all his stickers and shout black bass rims out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's loads going on though. Yeah. I've never been before. 
Have uh, you been? No, I've not been. I, know James been. Been. I have, yeah. We had a stand there a couple of years ago. Uh, so yeah, we had a stand a couple of years ago and then I've been twice other than that. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's really worth noting we don't have a stand this no, we year, don't but this we year. will be there. Yeah, we will be there. Walking around but, and you can just see us out in the open uh, viewing all stand the other stands. Yeah, stand, standless. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've never been there. So I was looking for the website and there's, there is, it's way bigger than I thought it yeah. was. Well, it's I, the NEC. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but you never know like when someone does an event at a venue, it doesn't really matter like yeah, you, you can so. you can cordon off as much as you want, you know what I mean. So much yeah. of that might be taken up from like backstage stuff or whatever. But like, it, it, there's load. Like the the list of uh like traders is something. Is it like something like over five hundred? It's a lot. Yeah, like over five hundred and seventy traders or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty mental. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm excited for it. I've not really been to any like conventions, conventions re- just generally, really. Uh, but definitely not for you know the war gaming board gaming sort of space so uh, yeah looking forward to it we're well, going do... to the biggest one in the UK for your first one yeah it was a yeah, good start so, isn't it yeah, yeah. Good start, yeah. yeah well I've done Warhammer Fest last year but uh, yeah. I've been to the NEC recently and I know I it's quite War- sizable so. Warhammer Fest is a bit more contained exactly whereas yeah. this is like a broad yeah thing um, they, they have like I mean another thing that threw me off that I didn't realise was that they have like shows there Oh, really? Like they have like live shows. I know so it's like, going to be like seminars and such. Yeah, there's like, seminars, but then there's also like um, just kind of live. There's like like comedy shows and things like that. Um, nice. That I guess are board game related. One of them is um, there's a YouTube channel called uh, No Rolls Barred, which is like a board game YouTube channel. Um, kind of, I think it was at one point an offshoot of like a wrestling thing, hence no rolls barred because no holds barred. Always comes is a wrestling, full circle with wrestling. Is a wrestling thing. Well, that's how I found out about <laughs> it. So, um, and they've got a live show there. I think they're going to have a stand and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, there's some really cool, interesting, even like non Warhammer stuff. Um, I'm mostly there for the Warhammer stuff. But. Yeah. So although we don't have a stand and we're going to be there, you will find us on a certain stand for many reasons, which cannot be discussed at the moment, but will be more will be brought to light very soon yeah very mysterious yeah. take it, it focusing my inner dark angel jack yeah keeping those secrets probably uh but what best to keep up to date with that on our socials correct like on yes. siege instagram we'll yeah. probably announce that when we can yeah but, very much so yeah we'll be there wandering about regardless but mm-hmm. yeah very exciting uh speaking of exciting we have another little uh, little announcement for you uh james you want to fire away with uh, some info on the siege academy yes 100 percent um I mentioned it in the post that I'd done. We we get asked a lot whenever we put recruitment adverts up about like training. Uh, is there any way that like I could sort of like uh, uh, apply but not apply to see where I'm at and that kind of stuff? And although I'd love to spend lots of time doing that with everyone that applies, it's just it's not always feasible time wise. Um, but also at the same time, very much wanted to uh, to sort of develop some form of academy or some kind of like pipeline process to to develop people for, for painting for the company in the future. Um, I think that's something for the position that we're in and, and, and obviously what, you know, what we are as a company. Um, training and, and helping to sort of develop new painters for this business is, is something that I'm, I'm very passionate about. And uh, and yeah, so I, I thought it'd be good to sort of like launch that initially in the UK. So taking five uh, trainees uh, on board, getting weekly guidance and uh, and assistance with their painting to develop them in, in aim of hopefully joining the team in the not too distant future. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the precipice for it. Yeah, uh, you can find all the full details about that at siegestudios.co.uk forward slash jobs. And if you're watching on YouTube or on your podcast app, there'll be a link in the show notes as well, or the description. Have you got a favorite character from a book or piece of artwork and thought to yourself, if only that had a miniature? Custom Service is our character creation brand here at Siege Studios. Custom Service is not just a kit bash. We create miniatures using traditional hand sculpting alongside conversion for entirely unique and bespoke miniatures that will blow you away. Our talented team of sculptors methodically and meticulously bring your thoughts into reality with the precise, refined, and sharp work you'd expect from a digital sculpt and pair that with our world-class painting team for an incredible display piece you'll be proud to own. To bring your character to life and get a quote now, head to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Uh, Should we do some listeners' comments? Let's do it. Uh, Tenari93 says... Bon Mamon Gang represent. My girlfriend and I have both been using them since we started painting at the start of this year. Plus, you get to buy more marmalade. Exactly. Like, fine. like can I just point out? Because obviously, as George has alluded to, we don't see the image that goes up on 
the screen behind me. Uh-huh. The screen. I call it a screen. It's not a screen. But we don't see don't the image. Don't tell them. We don't see the image. <laughs> um, so when I watched that episode back and saw the actual compilation of the images, that was my first time seeing the fishbowl. It's not a fishbowl, by the way. Um, I can confirm it's not a fishbowl. I would just like to point out that George's salsa pot was filthy. Yeah. Absolutely poor, poor <laughs> cleanliness on that thing. I actually bragged before about how I used to like change the routine. I know, I don't yeah. Like a dirty it looked, water pot. looked filthy. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize how bad it was until I took a photo of it. <laughs> it was a real reality check. Um, the fishbowl, I can confirm, <laughs> is insane. Thank you. Thank you. That is mental. All I'm going to say. The logic is sound. Thank you. The logic. I'll take that. The logic works. <laughs> it's a small win, James. Yeah. The, <laughs> I'll the, take that. <laughs> the logic that he used to say why he uses the fishbowl is makes perfect sense. However, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I don't know why. Well, the, you say about cleaning. I just want to touch upon that. So I do actually wipe my and clean the water pot. And there's a reason for that. Is that a brag? Like No, it's not a brag. The fishbowl. Yeah, it's a reason. It's a re- <laughs> there's a reason for doing it. Uh, the reason for it is... You're just saying it, like no one else cleans it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Everyone think, cleans it. Everyone cleans the No, I'd, I'd imagine pot. that maybe a lot of people just leave it and refill it up with water. But what I mean True, is... True, a lot of people that, probably do. I'm, yeah. not saying, I'm not saying that. The George reason, clearly just leaves it. No, 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 no. Acrylic paint, right? Once it's dried up on that lid, it's hard to get off, all right? Nonsense. I'm not like boiling a kettle every time I want to clean my water pot out. Like, I've got stuff to paint. Anyone using a bomber mom <laughs> knows that you can clean that fairly easily you can give it a very good the other, the other thing I will say is that with a with a jam jar as much as I do love a bomber mom like a lot okay <laughs> you had me in tears when we filmed that episode but then again when I was editing it yeah. like I just relived it you're welcome it's fine um, <clears throat> is that all jam jars kind of like chamfer in at the top so the access on the inside when you're trying to clean it is harder I'm going to call it a fishbowl not that it is a fishbowl see what I mean yeah. the logic okay. is perfect with the candle Basically, it's perfectly straight. So all you do is when you finish painting, rinse it out, quick wipe, keeps it clean. Right, I have a question. Hang on, f- hang on. No, 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 no. Right, with that logic, yep. right, why not use a smaller candle? I just, because again, because, it goes back to the water. Because, because it goes back to the water. It, was it good. holds more water, which means that when you introduce paint into it, it dilutes more, which means your water lasts longer. And also there's less chance of, if there's any stuff in there that's with your water, it won't get picked up by the brush. With the caveat that you look like an absolute lunatic. Yeah, there is that. That's the problem. So this is, this I will is take, an interesting thing for me because it, it l- logically makes perfect sense. <laughs> Everything he said about it makes perfect sense. But you're not doing it. Uh, there's no way. I won't do it. I won't do what it. If I stuck a, what if I stuck a Bomb Mon label on it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to fill it with jam? Yeah, but, well, I so mean, I have to they made that big, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, so, so. Um, yeah, it's just an interesting thing isn't it that it makes perfect sense i'll concede the logic but it's absolute lunacy well, well i'm worked. not having a fishbowl on my desk well, i'm not that spoiled for it, space it, either. Wor- it works for me and i like it so that's all that matters for yeah. me anyway that's true all right it's very true. can't argue with that can i it's put me in a put me in an awkward yeah. spot now how do you yeah. follow that up? Well done, i hope you feel good about yourself yeah, <laughs> yeah. you bully <laughs> <laughs> fishbowl bully <laughs> Uh, Faces and Bases says, brilliant episode as it really uh, explored the thought process uh, going into a new army. It shows that there's several valid ways, depending on your desired outcome and use for the army slash project. Uh, little tip from me, put a little bit of extra effort into things like backpacks. You're going to be looking at the back of your gaming army a lot, and it gives you some satisfaction when you can see that they look really, really nice. That's interesting, isn't it? Because I hadn't thought about that at all. And from a non-gaming point of view, when we're painting models... You don't think about the back, do you? We're often thinking, better make sure the front looks amazing. Who cares about the back? Because you're just going to post the front image anyway. So really, you're painting for your opponent. If you think about it. it. If you're doing it that way, yeah. Yeah. You're you're painting to be like, look how nice my models look. And then to yours, to you, they just look rubbish. But yeah, if I... So that's what I'm going to do, I think. I'm going to only paint the back. (laughs) Um, No. No, that is actually, that's just, actually, play, just play with your models turn around the other way well, uh, yeah they're moonwalking <laughs> down the yeah because exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> where did that come from I caught me so off guard <laughs> you, weren't ready, you weren't ready for that was where he? did that come from <laughs> 
He's dying. He's actually dying. <laughs> sounded like a sound bite. <laughs> it didn't sound like that came out of your mouth. Oh, God. Oh, George is dead. George has left. George has left. George has left. George has actually left. I'm not even going to paint the front. I'm just going to paint the back. Just paint the back. Because that's all I'm going to look at anyway, so what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> New new uh, new speed painting hack that's going to be all the rage yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Paint half the model. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's the opposite side to what you'd expect. I've, yeah, I've I'll, <clears throat> I've done it before. You just paint the front, like you know, you're in a rush, you've got to get the photo done. For an You've article. done it on this very show. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very under the bus. It's up to bit. the viewers to do, to work out which one it was for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a caveat: my crew is fully painted. Uh, well, I haven't seen it. Don't about you, Joe. Yeah, I haven't seen it at all. No I haven't seen it. Yeah. Half look, look at it, it's AI, it. clearly AI. <laughs> There'll be a rear, sh rear shot on there now, so you can see I have. Um, yeah, good tip though, good tip. I would, that was I, an interesting I, point. I would, I would instinctively skimp out on the back because of my just normal painter mode thought process. So yeah. it has given me a bit of a nudge to be like, make sure you paint the whole model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luke Martin video says, I'm literally buying a new fridge because the current one is too small to put a wet palette in. This is bizarre because like this is the, the some of the crazy things that James comes out with. Is people actually, actually follow. People are actually following. Yeah, it. but it works. It's but it also like works. It that's another one. That's that's, that's a, what makes it more frustrating. Yeah. it's not entirely nonsense. Yeah. it's like just enough of a good point. This is what I'm saying. The logic is perfectly fine. So execution what, could stand improvements. So <laughs> execution just it, it's it's similar to nonsense. like um, the execution. This is always good. Hear me out on this because this is going to sound wild but uh, like a wild comparison but you know how like i've always thought with like parkour that like there's so much effort and so much like that goes into it that's really well respected but there's just it never looks good it always looks goofy <laughs> like it always just looks goofy so i can't respect it as much like there's so much you can be jumping off of buildings and doing all this or whatever but you're still just but you like, just look like a goober you just yeah. look like a kid climbing over a railing at tesco so it's like <laughs> It's a similar thing. The logic is perfectly respectable, perfectly understandable. However, if I went round yours for a painting session and you pulled a, uh, your palette out of your fridge, I would be like, "This." And you had a you had a fish bowl. And on you had your a desk. fish bowl thing. I would be like, "This is absolutely." You'd be like, "I must be at James's house." Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> Where is it? Just just to caveat, it's not a fish bowl, and I I'm, I do I have a mini fridge. I love the offence. No, the, I'm going to defend the, the I'm going to defend the fish, fish bowl. bowl thank you. You're going to defend it. You know, it's feelings. All right. Okay. So <laughs> you just call it a fish bowl. It's not a fish bowl. <laughs> big, big candle. <laughs> uh, Marcus Ci says, uh, "Well, actually." We seem to have sparked a little bit of a, of a poetry sort of contest mm. on the back of the, uh, the wonderful poem that we had last week. And um, this one is just beautiful. Like, I really hope I can do this one justice because it's, you know, really heartwarming. Yeah, yeah. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I paint my base rooms black. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Okay. Very, very, very yeah. fitting. That's, Unfortunately, it's not February the 14th. That, but... that, that, that's, um, <laughs> that's just an example of, you know, the the sort of the, the way that we have with words and the arguments and things that we have. We still kind of have this poetic undertone that is obviously clearly sparking creativity in people. <laughs> um, and that's I, kind of what I was talking about last week. Where I was saying how I, your wisdom I, always finds people. I like people. the wisdom finding people throughout the episode. And that's clearly what's happened here. So, um, <laughs> I like it personally. I like this this movement, um, and I, I would encourage more. I, should we do like a slam poetry night <laughs> <laughs> against each other? Oh, against each other? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, that'd be good. Like, I think I've got a, all I've got kind a, of like like we can diss James's fish bowl. Episode fifty is creeping up. Maybe we, we can, have a we can diss your this your uh, brown bass rooms and stuff, but in slam poetry form. Yeah. Like I've it. I've got an event that night, unfortunately. So. <laughs> so. Uh, Angelus says this podcast is great but this is a painting studio and two of the three painters are always talking about how they haven't painted anything haven't built anything and don't play the games how does that work uh, who actually does the painting for the studio did, did I not mention I painted a crew I <laughs> <laughs> wonder when uh, people are going to cotton on to this um, yeah I mean fair point we did reply to this one just with some links and stuff because I think people, it's been a while now. 
but we actually did an episode explaining what we all actually do in the company and stuff like that. Well, I think we're at the point now we've like we're getting quite a lot of viewers of late, and I think a lot of people are finding us from the podcast. It's not that they know Siege and then they find the podcast. Yeah, it's it used to, to be the other, other way around, and now people are finding the podcast and maybe don't necessarily know what Siege is, so they just hear us mention it, yeah. and they're like, okay, these three guys have a painting studio, but they're never painting or something like that. So. Um, we'll put a link in the description. There is an older episode. I think it's episode that, three, isn't it? No, no, no. It's, it's a little bit after. Um, and I think it was called like the Full Seas Studio Story or something. But what yeah. it essentially is, is us all just chatting about our roles within the company, how we joined, what we do and things like that. But yeah, um, um, but as a little TLDR, uh, we are sort of on the media front of this sort of thing, but we do have is it 80 artists, 80 plus artists. 80 now? plus artists. Yeah, yeah. It's over yeah. 80 yeah, freelance artists um, who actually paint the commissions. George is one of them still. Yep. Um, James obviously doesn't really have the time to paint the commissions anymore. I'd love um, to, but I just, I genuinely don't have the time. Um, so he doesn't do that anymore. He's, busy running the company um as am i i've never been a painter for the company but um james did try and get me to do a commission once and did i he? said no <laughs> um a wise man in your own right <laughs> i just did yeah i just could see it go wrong and i i it stressed me out personally yeah no fishbowl mate i think a lot, some people don't think about that when they decide to start um do doing commission painting or even applying for us or something like that like but i think it stressed me out painting someone else's like vision yeah do you know what i mean because i'll be like no i want to do it my way i want to do it <laughs> i want to do it how i would do it yeah okay so. uh mg uk says drill off drill <laughs> off drill <laughs> uh okay. well funny yeah. funny you should request such a thing if only i mean if only i'd brought Barry the boss. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> right. I've, I haven't named my pin vice. Uh, don't worry, I brought Penny the pin vice. <laughs> <laughs> of all the names, you come up with Penny. I thought it was going to be Perry. Okay, well, uh, we've spoken before on many, many episodes about how James is an absolute maniac and likes to use power tools designed for construction work to drill tiny little space marine weapons like this. I have been an advocate that that is lunacy and that you should be using, you know, nice little, nice little precise hobby drill. Mm -hmm. And there's been many debates that we've had about this over the episodes. And we have decided that enough is enough. And we are in the spirit of uh, last week's discussion, going to put this to put this to bed, I think. Yep. So uh, we're going to have a, probably going to cut and uh, you'll see the, you'll see the preparation. So you each have in front of you four bolters, four different bolters. Yeah. you you both have the same ones. We're going big to small. Yep. You have to do the best possible drilled barrel holes, including the muzzle brake, if there is one. Mm -hmm. They've all got muzzle brakes. Yep. So they've all got them. Uh, as fast as you can. Yep. You get, each one will get compared against each other. Mm -hmm. Whoever's is the most presentable yep. will get the point. So there's four points up for grabs. Are we going to do this as four different rounds? So we each do the heavy and then you judge, and then we each do the normal bolt rifle and then you judge, or we're going to do no, all no, four? No, I think you've got to do go. all four because there is a bonus point available for whoever finishes first. Okay. So if you each get two, two, like if you get each get two that are, that are good, mm -hmm. whoever does it quicker, because that was the, the, the basis of the argument originally Whatever George wants to say now is different, but... Uh, I believe that I just said it's insane. I don't think I argued that it's technically quicker, but I think you look like a lunatic having a one millimeter drill bit. I in. think you said you would do it quicker. You did say that. I'm sure. No, you're just going along with no, it. Because that's, said, where, that's, did, where, the, that's that. where the... Um, I'll drill... What did I'll you say? I'll out-drill you fact. I'll, I'll out-drill you. Yeah, <laughs> that's where the out-drill you thing right. came from. Anyway... Well, now, now I'm here and it's all coming to fruition. I'm not optimistic about speed, I'll be honest. But, okay, uh, well, you better make sure you've got <laughs> the four tidiest, most central. I'm going for precision. Here's the key factors because I'm going to be the judge. Uh -huh. Cent central, like linement. Uh -huh. You can't have one of alignment. these. Alignment, yep. yeah. Like they're, they're, it's got to be. What about boring out the, back, the, the, muzzle, the, the end of the gun as well to make it look like a real barrel? Do you want that as well? <laughs> oh, I haven't thought about. I, haven't thought, I didn't think I'd have so much change, so much say in it. What do you mean boring out the? Well, you, 
it looks a bit tonker toy just having a hole. If you bore it out, you put a chamfer on it so that it looks like it's actually muzzle on the gun. Well, we'll do, well you do whatever you do whatever you okay, think yeah. is the nicest, <laughs> the best. You'll see. You'll see. I'm just looking for a nice drilled barrel. Well drilled barrel. Um, yeah. So like placement. Yep. Um, precision. Precision. Yep. Finesse. Cleanliness. Style points. Yep. Yeah. Am I going to be judged on how much of a lunatic I look? Holding the tool because I feel like that is an important. Part. I would rather aesthetics you both is not look the, uh, absolutely d- mental. Trust, trust, <laughs> trust the youngster to think about aesthetics yeah. after an execution. Yeah, um, well, I was I hoping my... that you would deduct points from James from looking like uh, Look, looking like a maniac, right. looking like there a is, serial killer. Nothing... No, well, no, hang on, hang on. We're going to introduce the tools. Okay. Right. All yeah, right. yeah. Okay, okay. Right. so that, that's the ground rules. Okay, okay. that's the okay. point. It's right. very simple. James, as a barrel hole starter, yeah. What are you bringing to the table? Billy the box car. I mean, why are they named? I don't know why they're named. Everything gets named. It's because it becomes sentimental if it has a name and you care more about it. I've had Billy a long time. You served me well. Well, there you go. All right. There you go. All right. And then. So just, just for clarity, for the audio listeners as well, uh, you might be expecting a hobby knife, an X Acto blade, a scalpel. This is a box cutter. And at that, not a sharp one or one that looks particularly well looked after. <laughs> Particularly precise careful, or clinical. Yeah. Careful, you'll hurt Billy's fingers. <laughs> yeah, but apparently he's sentimental about it. Uh, it's not about how sharp it is. It's about making a notch. That's all it's used for, George. So it does the job. Okay. Well, uh, on that note, I'll introduce mine. And uh, I've spoken about this before many a time. Mm-hmm. I've got myself, as always, a nice, fresh, brand new scalpel blade to go on my... Uh, He's unpacking it. I'm unpacking He's it. He's unpacking it right now. Yeah, yeah, set that one. This up. is the the sharp blade versus the. Um, I'd love it if he cuts his thumb right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sharp. Hands are sweaty, so. The sharp blade versus the uh, dull blade argument. There we go. As well, so, from a little while ago. I'm going in. Coming in. Oh, hot. maybe we should do another one. If this goes well, we should do another. We should do a mold line removal one. That's a good idea. Do you remember that clip of James at Warhammer Fest with like the mold? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, you won't find any okay. mold lines on that. Barely any model left on it. <laughs> okay. Well, when it comes to uh, to the drilling itself, James, what have you got there? Introducing the reigning, defending champion of drilling, Barry the Bosch, <laughs> conveniently named after a London gangster. <laughs> what well, Barry the Bosch? <laughs> Okay. Barry <laughs> the Bosch. Oh, okay. God. Okay. Right. Okay. So right. Uh, again, for the audio listeners, a what can only be described as a massive drill yeah. with the tiniest drill bit One you've mil. ever seen in your life. One mil. <laughs> Looking absolutely insane going out the end of that. <laughs> One mil. <laughs> it looks like the real drill bit snapped off, but that's all that's left. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the inner workings. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see he's laughing in a minute. Okay. Well, I myself have got my trusty uh, Amazon four pound fifty worst possible pin vice known to man because I couldn't find my other one. Okay. Oh, hang on, he's getting the excuses in now. If yeah, I don't see this about, about? it's because of the Amazon I mean, pin vice. Couldn't, couldn't find it. So I back. Well, I say I couldn't find it. Right, so here's what happened. I moved painting office back to my house about a year ago. Yeah, and somehow during that process, I lost my pin vice. And you know, it's one of those things where you're like, I'll oh, just get another one when I get around yeah. to it in the hobby shop. And I haven't. So uh, this was the one that I could get right, I'm gonna with say, the quickest possible delivery. I feel like George I'm gonna, is bottling it. I'm going to say there's, this now. There's, there's, <laughs> all right. There's poor workman excuses. blames his tools. Yeah. I will just say for the record, listen to the quality of this. Oh, that's horrible. Stop it. <laughs> Half the listeners just turned off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. What great bit for a podcast. Oh, well, listen well, to this. Horrible sound. Well, by to the be way. fair, in, in George's defence, they are going to be hearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, the, at least a little bit more satisfied. I suppose. Right, anyway, okay. right, we've we've been. Uh, They're the tools. You're putting it off long enough. We've had yeah. the excuses in and everything. All right, okay. All right, I'm ready. I want. I'm ready. Uh, starting. You're not allowed to be touching your equipment All right, when okay. you're starting. Rubik's cube rules. And it's on. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> it's, hands on the table, please, gentlemen. It's on. No, you're not allowed to touch your equipment. What are you doing? Look, look at this. Look, look he's at even this. Che- he's cheating already. VAR on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Hands on the table. Flat on the table. Hands, on the table. Hands, hands I've been waiting. Table. Hands flat on the table. Um, and it's three, two, one, go. It's on go. Okay. 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 You ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Okay, we are off. <laughs> Sorry, we are off. He's already drilling. 
Oh, James has gone the opposite way around to what we thought. James has gone the opposite way around to what we thought. He's going drill first, knife second, I think. I just wanted to warm up getting the first. Oh, that was okay, that was a mistake. That wasn't a technical uh that wasn't a technical decision. Whereas George's George has used the, the knife. He's made the pilot holes on all of them so far, I think. That's the first is that first one complete from James? No. No, just the muzzle brakes going all first. The brakes. All the muzzle brakes all first the muzzle for James. First for me. This is actually mental. <laughs> so if anyone is just listening to this, I apologise. Please go and watch it on YouTube. Look at that, George. I'm uh, r- I'm not using the full power of the drill. What are you saying? You couldn't? You can't drill the? Uh... There's trash talk going on now. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if anyone was expecting that's, that. That's 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 one done already. Okay, so James. James is one up. Well, not one up. He's one, one Two. down. Two down. Look at the concentration. That's one down. George is one, one down. Last one, George. James is on his last one, so he's going to get that bonus point most likely. So George's have got to be... Well, if I've already conceded the point, I'm now going... I'm at the point now where I might as well go for the decision. That's my only hope. Yeah, but we also have listeners to think about so don't <laughs> do you know what I mean come back in uh, the end of the episode of Harvey Hacks where I'll have finally finished drilling my second barrel that drill sound that pin voice sounds absolutely horrible it's not great Joe I'm not going to lie to you what did I say about if it, makes it if it makes you feel any better Joe this is much worse to use than it is to hear <laughs> Hang on, James is still going on something, but I thought we're, we're just over two minutes in, by the I'm way. Just, I'm literally just, just sorting out some of the... Uh, oh, he's James, for, he's James, is fine, James is fine-tuning. That's how far ahead he is. As someone who was on Team Pinvice, this is not... I'm not enjoying this. So I've basically just re-drilled all the holes. He's done twice. twice. He's lapped you. <laughs> Do you want me to put a chamfer on it so that it's not just like that? It's also got a bit of a. Chamfer. If you if you think that makes well, no, because I don't know because that might be taken. Is that like personal preference? That's personal preference. preference yeah. yeah, I've done it on one because I thought I'll do it on one just to show you what it looks like. Basically, um, so, I'll, I'll say assuming George isn't going to do that, I say you can leave it on the other ones. Oh, okay. But I'll, 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 I'll just finish off this one then. I'll yeah, do it on the one on. that you've done. Um, because it'll be easier to judge. I think. Yeah, that's fine. This is very tense. No, I'm done. I'm just finishing up. Oh, it's not tense. James is done. <laughs> I'm literally just sorting out the last bit. I'm not going to lie to you. When I do this at home on my own, in the comfort of my own house at my hobby desk, you know, I've got my tunes on. Yeah. This doesn't feel this slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it because we don't have like music on or anything? You know, but there's there's a lot of pressure now and I'm, I'm finally realising how, uh, how tedious this is. Yeah. So. Not knocking Barry now, are you, mate? <laughs> right we'll just but I'm, again it comes down to I'm going for the bonus points I'm going for the bonus points it I'm comes already, down I'm already to, conceding the loss on time it comes down to surely I mean sure James's one makes logical sense but again I'm just going to check me work for the last time it's, it's, it's going over it for a third time oh he, he has out drilled you for speed we don't know for quality yet. Fact. We don't know for quality yet. I literally can't even hold this. Here's <laughs> <laughs> the squeak. Here's the, sque- the squeak that makes me. <laughs> Worst spin mice I've ever used in my life. <laughs> oh, I'm squeaking. I'm going to cry. <laughs> if you're a long term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. 
And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Right, we're back. We're back. We've swapped seats again. I've got my glasses. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's reflect a little bit on how that went before we get into the judging. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. That might be the worst pin vice I've ever used in my life. So I feel like <laughs> I was sort of up against it a bit there. I haphazardly You packed. brought it in. It wasn't like it was chucked on you. That was your weapon of choice. It was an error. Mistakes were made when, uh, when packing this morning. Do you, so you want a rematch is what you're saying? Uh, I wouldn't say that, but I'd just say it didn't feel as bad in my head as it was going to be until it was happening. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll right. admit that hearing that electric drill was quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't blame Barry for the noise he makes for not the underperformance. I, so, I want to say I knew it was all over within the first four seconds when I just heard <laughs> and then <laughs> 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 James actually made a mistake as well, I think, because you went in straight away with the drill before. Nope. No, I didn't. I couldn't work out whether that was a mistake. Do you know why, or... you know why I drilled the muzzle brake uh, first? No, no, not the muzzle brake. You went in, before you'd done anything, you picked the drill up, just started drilling. Yeah, I'd done the muzzle brake first. Oh, I thought... So the reason I'd done the muzzle brake first is just to get used to the trigger. Okay. Just to feel it out. Yeah, so yeah. you should have done that. Get used Obviously. to the... <laughs> um, should we have a look at them, do some judging then? Yeah. yeah. I'll put them on, uh, on screen for everyone watching Yeah, so we'll do, the we'll heavy do comparison pictures. So we'll do the heavy bolt rifle first. So... This one is George's. Yep. So I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll put your in. right hand is George. Your left hand is me. Yep. I'll, I'll make notes as you go, Joe, for the uh, for the scorekeeping. Okay. I will say, unfortunately for George on this one, the center alignment is definitely better for James. Okay. I would say on this one, both both as clean as each other. A good clean uh, clean drill. Both the muzzle brakes done really nicely. I think if you could even compare this one to yours, this one is James. Is yours is slightly off center yeah, compared to James, I would say. Yeah. So I'm going to have to give the point to James on that one. James already has a point for the speed uh -huh. as well. So that's two nil to James at the minute. We go for the normal bolt rifle. Mm -hmm. Oh, just throwing George's down there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, this is close. This one. <laughs> This is close. Do a half point. Can we do that? I think looking at that objectively, and hopefully people will agree when they see the picture, I think George's just takes it for centralness. There's a bit of there's a bit of debris on James's on the muzzle brake as well that hasn't been fully cleaned. Oh, that just, needs, that. that just needs a quick, quick puff of air done. Well, you know, you were faffing about checking them three times. Yeah. You would have thought that considering he had four four goes back and forth that he would have tidied that up. I, I was yeah. put off by the squeak. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, the other well, side's fine. I'm going to give George the point on that one, I fair. think. Okay. Just. Just. So that's 2-1. Uh-huh. Um, we're on to the, the, is it the assault pistol? It's the auto bolt pistol. Or, auto bolt pistol. Oh, that is close. That's closer. That's even closer. That's difficult. They're both like perfect. I mean, that's testament to how well we draw barrels, I guess. They're both pretty <laughs> spot on on those. Um, half point, has got to be. I mean, half point. No, 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 no. Up. It's a definitive. You've got to pick one. Half point kind of breaks the system. There's, there's a tiny difference in the size of the hole. Mm -hmm. that's, probably, that's probably just the drill bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm inclined to say that I would, pers personal preference, I would prefer a bigger hole, which mm. is what George's one has. Right. However, okay. it's that is almost impossible to So you're giving a judge. point on personal preference, Joe? Well, what else am I supposed to... They're both objectively... I'm taking, I'm taking that point. They're both I'm taking that point. The same. No, you, you already said it now. I'm taking the point. Okay. Well, if I gave that one to George, then we have one left. And what does that leave you on? Three... 
No, it's no, too, too, old. too old. It's, it's too, too old. old. So the, this, this is the final decider. So this might ruin it for me because I've bored out the barrel on this one. Well, um, it could, yeah, but it could make it for you. Might not. It could make it He's for not him. confident. Look at him. No, Look at I'm, him. He's not confident. Right. Okay. Well, the, actually, so the boring out of the barrel thing is actually kind of what I'm talking about. Can I say that? It's just making the hole like a little bit bigger and it eases in. Yeah, but... Well, that's what won you the point on the last one, so I wouldn't get to... I, wouldn't get to I would it. say the execution your of that. Is, the execution heart. of that looks like someone who had the weight of a drill and couldn't control it, if you ask me. No, 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 no. No, I... I, aside from the fact, you know, you can go down the personal preference route. I do actually prefer that personally. But aside from that, even if you took that out, I would say that it's probably executed a little bit better than your one on that one anyway, unfortunately. You can have a look. Losing See, steam I, towards the end there. Look at, even comp comparing your own ones to each other, you can see the dis the kind of this one's a bit it's a bit off, isn't it? Mm. It's a bit off, a little bit. Not off. Not my best work. Not your best work. Not my best work. It's no assault auto <laughs> bolt rifle era, George. That era of George is is pretty good. Um, Do you I think that? that gives a point to James. Do you hear that, Barry? We won, mate. And I'm not a drill person, but. Um, I mean, it's the timing as well. The timing, the timing, really helped you that was the main part of the argument as well <laughs> from what i remember i'll take that um that was close though mm. that was a good laugh yeah, yeah that should... was very difficult to do under pressure like that i will admit it was i bet it was under pressure it was that's why i done a little drill first you were doing you done it like three times i know yeah i know and you still got a little oh yeah it's where what happens is when you when you take the drill out once you've done it anything that because obviously the drill like... as it bores through it sticks to the drill bit so as you draw out it sometimes can get caught it's a tiny little space but yeah I should yeah. I should have blown that a bit harder I think good performance overall from both of you George of his restraints of his uh oh come on you can't apparent. use that you can't defend him I'm with that make him feel better <laughs> he's just lost can you like <laughs> just... I will say not ideal conditions not a great pin vice didn't have a hobby lamp didn't have an onyx oh! Excuse me. Come on, that's just excuse. If I'd have my Onyx. I, I do think I'm feeling a rematch at some point. It was close. It's close what happens in UFC if it's close. Rematch. Excuse me, I won 3-2. That's not close. That's, that's a close. win. That's one point difference. It's that's a, close. It's a win, Joe. That's close. Mm -hmm. Um, I would I'm 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 I'll let the commenters decide. But I'm saying rematch at some point, personally. Look, I'm happy to do it annually. We'll do an annual drill off. Not right, okay. annually. I'm not waiting a year. <laughs> not annually. I'm not doing it. <laughs> if we were doing like a hundred, yeah, okay, do it yearly. It's there's four each. You can do one. In I feel like I can do better than that. I feel like that wasn't my best work. I was I was laughing. It was a very funny scenario. Yeah, my hands were sweating. No onyx lamp. I just like I was to, up against it, John. I'd yeah. just like to point out that I am making no excuses at all whatsoever. You won. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, okay. Yeah, I'm saying rematch at some point. I'll let the commenters decide. If you want a drill off rematch, then and we'll do it with more. I think more drills. George more drills. Terrified. No, more, <laughs> double drill. More, more barrels. More I think barrels. we should do it again. We should get a uh, an invigilator in, and the three of us do it simultaneously. I'll tell you what. I will use the other thing that everyone keeps recommended. Is that the electric pin? The electric thing? pin vice is the medium between both of them. All I've right. never used one, but maybe I could test those out. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's a good idea. Let us know if you want that. Then I suppose. Yeah. Okay, topic for this week. We wanted to talk about the uh, the mini painting YouTube space kind of as a whole. Um, recently, GW in particular have started to take YouTube a lot more seriously, which um, me and Joe are sort of YouTube uh, back-end nerds. So mm. we, we quite like to keep on top of these sorts of things, see how it's going on. But I uh, wanted to talk about sort of like our history in consuming the mini painting YouTube stuff, like some followers, uh, creators that we like. And yeah. uh, go from there. I think it's like, it's just an interesting scenario because I don't think there's any other um, sub-genre of YouTube content or whatever or like industries within YouTube content that you can pinpoint something and go, oh, there's a moment where the key company in that thing has started 
doing YouTube yeah. properly. But when I say they're doing YouTube properly, I mean they're doing YouTube in a way that a YouTuber would do YouTube. It's not the case of like, say you get like the TV shows or like, well, no, but I mean like outside of that. So if you take um, late night TV shows or um, things like that, like Jimmy Kimmel and stuff, they just upload their clips onto YouTube or whatever. Yeah, they have a big YouTube account, but that isn't like doing YouTube, is yeah. it? Do you know what I mean? Whereas Games Workshop are actually making YouTube videos in a way that a YouTuber would make YouTube videos. Yeah, there's like personalities behind it. There's dedicated yeah. videos. And it's a very conscious decision because they've they've clearly changed how they format their content. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone from... Because I would, I would argue, even back in the day, we had Peachy on not too long ago and we were talking about when he was on their YouTube channel painting. Duncan used to be on their painting. Even some of the current team... Um, who are on the channel now um, did videos in the style of, of Peachy and Duncan when they just started, I think. So like, yeah. the old tutorial type videos. Yeah, yeah. I would argue even as tutorial videos, those videos were not considered or, or uh, they weren't produced in a way that was like, this is a YouTube video. Yeah. They were a tutorial video that could be put on any website, any website you want. They posted it on Facebook, They, you know, they hosted it on Warhammer Community or whatever. It seemed like Games Workshop used YouTube as a video hosting platform more than like actually tapping into what YouTube's audience, uh, or actually tapping into attracting YouTube's audience within the website itself. Um, but I think you started to see like the transition start to happen even within that because I think people started watching those videos because of the personalities that were in them, even though that wasn't the focus. And that's kind of like aided that transition. Yeah. But it was even things like back in the day, they didn't have comments on, on any of their videos. Oh really? Yeah. They, they yeah. didn't, they had comments turned off, which was, is quite common for yeah. a big company. Um, just turn the comments off because most of what a big company is uploading onto YouTube. If you look at like, I don't know what, I, I, you know, we, we talk about guitar stuff a lot and stuff like that. So I imagine if you went on like Marshall's YouTube channel. It's like professional product it's demos. It's like professional yeah, exactly, product yeah. demos and things like that. They might find that um, a viable option to turn off comments because it's more of an advertisement. You don't really want feedback and comments and discussion on your advertisement. I'm not saying Marshall do that. I don't know what content they do. But anyway, it's bigger companies is quite a normal thing. Um, they're not doing that anymore. And they, they made a, a decision a little while ago, it seems, um, Warhammer. And I remember seeing the first, like, um, the first comment section where they turned it back on and everyone was like, oh, you're letting us comment on the videos now. Like everyone was really excited about it kind of thing. Um, so it seems like it's a very conscious decision of, okay, let's actually treat YouTube like YouTube. I don't know if they've had a new person come in. I don't know if they've just randomly decided um to put someone in charge of it or, and and that's what they're coming out with but i love it i love that they're doing it and i just think it's an interesting thing to notice and say like i wonder what difference that's going to make to other people in the same industry like in the long term yeah like because uh, at the moment because other people have been doing it for so long and there's some really big channels it's like Games Workshop can look at what other people have been doing mm. and can see what's popular and they can do something similar to that. So it's like an interesting, weird thing of like... It's the first time in all the years that they've been a business where someone else has been leading the field, carrying the flag at the forefront. Yeah, just yeah. in that particular thing. Because like every, every, people have been doing it for 10 years. Naturally, they're ahead because Games yeah, Workshop are exactly. only just starting to care about it now. Because um, I remember we used to, we used to have like, when at one point I think Siege was like the biggest Instagram account mm -hmm. in the miniature painting yep. space because Games Workshop didn't have one yeah. in the early days. Like Siege had one like straight away, and Games Workshop didn't have one. And they set one up, and, and then they set one day up. Day later, and then, like, <laughs> like they, they set one up, and like yeah, within like a week they were obviously the biggest account because it's Games Workshop. It was so, way less than that. It was like the next day. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I was just like. I think it's an interesting thing because I don't think that will necessarily happen on YouTube. It, things move a bit different and it's a bit more of a commitment to subscribe and watch a video than it yeah. is to follow an Instagram page. But 
Yeah, it's just interesting. And I, and I do wonder um, how long it will take for them to maybe start. Leading are they, are, are they going to, are they going to uncover a new kind of format that other people are then going to start to try and emulate and yeah. things like that? I don't it's know. It's an interesting time to do it as well, because I think that there's a lot of saturation now in the particular in like painting tutorials and there's a lot of big channels doing it and the production value compared to what it was like even oh, like six yeah. years ago way higher well, like now you can actually see what they're painting it's yeah. not this like tiny little frame on your screen well yeah. i, I want to kind of like jump in because like when i obviously started siege in 2013 and i was looking on youtube so i started uploading videos at my own hobby videos onto YouTube. That's how like, I, I, that's one of the first things I've done when I got back. Not on the Siege account. Not on the Siege account. Yeah. I had like, I had like um, just a hobby YouTube channel. We've mentioned this before. Did we ever find the channel? Because we said we were going to find it. I, I, do you really want to hear an even more Essex version of me talking about stripping models? Oh, I 100%. do. 100%. <laughs> probably, probably not. Let's not. But, but I mean. You're just coming into the model. Yes, bro. We're going to get going with this. <laughs> it wasn't uh, that bad. The model. It was not that bad. But so I, I had my own hobby, hobby channel. Um, anyone who finds it can put it in the comments but um we're we not yeah. giving them it no i'm keeping it keeping it you don't want to see my old videos are we putting a bounty on this channel you can put a bounty on it if you want someone yeah. find yeah someone find it i don't know what you'll get you'll get five you'll siege get. points I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah, if 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 you find it we'll, we'll george sort, will paint your we'll, model we'll sort you out with a bit of merch or something yeah there we go i'm signing george up george will paint your model. cheers joe yeah. i just <laughs> offered i just offered some merch off the store we'll, just oh, do that. Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll give fine. you a t-shirt off the store of your choice if you find james's old hobby channel yeah. on youtube you can, you can have a t-shirt is your face in it no okay that's that, even that makes it a bit yeah, harder yeah, that's worth a t-shirt yeah that's worth a t-shirt yeah so there's a challenge anyway i never thought that'd come about but anyway um so when i first started going on YouTube and looking on YouTube, like you're quite right. The production quality in general compared to now was, was, was like nowhere near what there is now. Like and painting tutorials were that kind of like, uh, like my classic way of iPhone setup, looking over it, no, not professionally cut or edited. So like, we're talking probably 2013. 2013 is ago. when, is when you're starting to upload. And yeah. this is what you're talking about now. YouTube's yeah, yeah. been around since about 2005. Yeah. I don't think you see any, Actual like miniature painting videos until whenever mini war gaming started, I, I doing, would which love I think is know. like two thousand and six or something. So well, like I'd actually love to know what the one of the the first. The, I'd love to know who uploaded the first video. And that sounds really silly, but I'm sure you'd be able to find out. But like that, what the oldest war gaming video? I think video. it's. I mean, in terms of tutorials, I distinctly remember. I must have been like seven. Do you remember? This is like oh seven. I distinctly remember there was like one maybe two channels doing like painting tutorials there was one one of them was apathetic fish yeah apathetic yeah. fish and also by painted yeah so by painted was another one that i used to but i think up. mini wargaming it maybe even if they weren't doing tutorials they were putting videos out very early it was like 2006 2007 yeah, yeah it was might so, not been painting tutorials literally but. back then it was mini wargaming uh, striking Scorpion. Forget about reports. I don't know when he started. He's, I don't know when Striking Scorpion it was a, actually it was started. At least, at least ten plus years ago. Um, like easily ten plus years ago. Because I remember, I remember his videos from when I started. Yeah. Can we yeah. get a little look on maybe Striking Scorpion's current like oldest video that he's well, moved up? First of all, I was way off on Apathetic Fish because the first video is from eleven years ago. Wow. At but least that, in terms of stuff that's listed. But that yeah. might have. <laughs> this is the thing. Like, yeah, things can might get have unlisted it. And, and stuff like that. Different channels, even. I, I, um, I also remember I've the got, oldest video from Mini Wargaming is 16 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, is I've got to just give him a shout out. It doesn't really get much recognition um, because he had a channel that was absolutely amazing. But if anyone doesn't know Templars, Templars Crusade 01, Mr. Brian James. That's when you know it's OG yeah. YouTube, by the way. A, 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 like a username with a number at the end of it and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Brian, who I don't know if he watches this or not, but he's recently got back into the hobby and um, 10 plus crusade. He used to upload loads of videos, like loads. And he was really like, really like, we're looking at 14 years ago, yeah. by the way. So, so a couple of years. That, after Brian? For his yeah. First yeah, so video, Brian, yeah. Brian used to upload loads of videos and I used to, I used to love Brian's videos and he, you know, for lots of reasons and things he stopped, um, he stopped obviously doing like football gaming sort of content on YouTube. But, um, but it's actually good because he's recently got back into it. He's, he's got back into stuff and uh, I'm sure any of you that are a bit OG and have, been in the industry and the hobby for quite some time. We'll remember Brian and, and, and um, Tempest Crusade. Uh, but he's, yeah, he's he's awesome. And uh, so I I literally watched his channel. I watched Mini Wargaming. I watched Striking Scorpion. Um, 
And then obviously 2014 or so, that's when TT, obviously Tabletop Tactics started. Um, the infamous kitchen battle report between Beard yeah. and him with the Iron Warriors. Which is, this is all like game, you're leaning into gaming and yeah, stuff Yeah, no, I know, I know. But I'm just saying like what was around predominantly like, yeah, in YouTube yeah, at that time. Yeah. But like for tutorials, as, as I mentioned, like Brian, Brian's, or uh, Tempest Crusade, Crusade 01, uh, Apathetic Fish and um, By Painted were the, some of the early on tutorials, early on yeah. tutorial channels and their their content i'm sure it's some more but yeah i'm yeah. sure i've missed i've missed quite a few uh, uh, you know people that are around at that point but um but their content was really the first tutorial content that used to be quite prevalent on youtube um and then you could fast forward to now and it's just it's just like the amount of content that goes we're on at the point every, now where we've, we've spoken about this before like you'll stumble across a channel with like 80,000 subscribers that you've never heard of that's yeah. been making videos for like eight years. Yeah, yeah. and it's got videos of like 250,000 yeah. views. And you just and haven't crossed paths yet. Yeah. 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 It's so different now. It's, it's very saturated compared to what it was. Like very saturated. But the, stuff. And the, the production value is YouTube in general is just so much easier to produce higher quality videos for anyone which yeah. is like good and bad i think it's like yeah. it's a bit about like i think that's why like, it took a while for the tutorials to come on because because the models are small and like you need a lot of lighting and like you need some like decent equipment at the time especially forgetting the fact of youtube wasn't like full hd and all that mm. but even going back like 10 years ago or less than that because you need like there was the the bar was a lot higher but now like as text come on like you know and it's, a five-year-old iPhone's plenty good enough yeah. to film a video of painting some models. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's interesting just how, how different it's come on. And it is a wider YouTube thing as well. Like, yeah, it's happened every in every, like, subsect. And I'd argue, like, it's kind of like the, uh, like the mini paint inside of it sort of follows behind a little bit. Yeah. Like, it's like sort of some trends and things like that are kind of just like, it filters down through more mainstream topics, um, more mainstream genres, and then finds its way into mini painting. Do you think that mini painting on YouTube is still quite isolated compared to like some of the other genres, so to speak? I, I don't think it is because I think that as you look at when you look at all the channels that are out there now producing stuff, I, I, when you and you compare it, I, I I I like cars quite a lot, and I watch a lot of car like restoration videos and things like that. And I see more sort of relevance now in that industry, which is massive, like that, that re like restoration of buying a car for Copart, buying all the parts and fixing it up and then getting it roadworthy again is like a huge industry like on YouTube. Like there's people with millions of followers, like with millions of views per video. But the format and the way that those videos look and are comprised is no different to how the videos now are shot with the production quality and all that kind of stuff. So I think there's a Not lot to of get too tangential, actually, but it's quite funny that you mentioned that because that bubble in particular is still kind of old school, almost vloggy, like less production quality. I don't watch any of it, so yeah. I, I have no idea what you're really talking about. Yeah. They're, 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 they're more on the vlog, like professional, good storytelling, but the actual like shooting of the video they're not like on a set like they're in a garage yeah, yeah. It's like there's a cameraman and stuff yeah you know what i mean it's funny though because i feel like some areas of youtube are now realizing that people kind of want that yeah, it's going backwards a little bit it's going backwards like people want a more genuine um, personal kind of touch personal yeah. thing yeah. which is which is what youtube used to be yeah and I think I think it's funny that almost like a certain industry like that who maybe never evolved, yeah, is going to end up being at Relevant the forefront, again. yeah, <laughs> because of what people want. I think um, I think a lot of it was pushed by like tech videos and tech creators in particular. Like if I say like tech YouTuber, you have this like instant picture of like someone at a desk yeah. with like a really nice camera. There's like lights behind them that are all just like perfectly framed and like yeah. a shelf with some like stuff and it's like like natural wood and everything's like perfect. Yeah, and like everything's like set production value, which is kind of the point because they're a tech channel, right? Yeah, but I feel like that's like had its day a little bit in other genres. Yeah, yeah, potentially. I mean, arguably, yeah. I mean, I got pretty bored of tech videos and things like that over the years. So, but I think with, with mini painting, when it actually comes to like painting videos, I think one of the problems that we've had is like there's only a certain amount of types of video you can do within mini paint it's like either a tutorial or we do the showcases mm -hmm. or now podcasts where we're at least talking about mini painting but with gaming i think the game inside grew so much quicker because it's like it's pretty cut and dry like people that are gaming want to watch a game yeah yeah 
I think people that want to game can game less than people that want to paint can paint. Yeah. We can paint any time we want. So it was like, yeah, the game inside grew a lot quicker, I think, than do you think, any painting. Do you think the difficulty around, like you can only repackage the same sort of thing so many times is sort of the forefront of where all the sort of clickbait conversation comes from? I, I don't know. I mean, like, I know what you're saying. Like one person's Blood Angel tutorial or Crimson Fist tutorial is the same it's in, its, in essence as like your painting. But even within like a, your own channel, right? Like say you're making videos and you're turning out, churning out tutorials. Say you're like 150 videos in. It's like, how do I make a new tutorial video that people want to click on? And then people start leaning into the, the title thumbnail sort of conversation and maybe making those videos less specific, more about like painting mindset and so on, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, when it comes to like clickbait and stuff like that, we've been accused a few times yeah. of, of things. I find that really interesting, right? Because not because I'm not like willing to take critique and feedback from the listeners. That's not my point with this. But what I find interesting I would say is that- Very minor amount. Yeah, I think yeah. we've had one or two comments it's not been in our entire yeah. thing. You wait, so, but, the comment section's going to be fire. <laughs> this one. But that being said, I think clickbait has become such an overused word that it's stopped meaning what it what actually, it actually means. means. Yeah, yeah. It's like the word like literally. It means like figuratively now. Yeah. It's just so overused. It's like the whole point of clickbait was when that was like coined as a new term was- a title or thumbnail that is very, very misleading because it's sensational. You click on the video, you've been baited in and it never delivers on what it's supposed to be. However, now any sort of title that's actually like quite thought provoking or makes you want to click. Anything that's trying to entice you in the slightest, even if it actually does the thing that it yeah. says is clickbait. But uh, And I think, well, it's not clickbait, but people call it clickbait. Yeah. And I that's think, what people are saying. I yeah. think that does tie back to what I'm saying about people wanting more just like organic old school YouTube stuff. Mm. Because at one point there was no like algorithm to worry about all of this. Like it was just people sitting, talking to a webcam and the title didn't really, you couldn't even set thumbnails on YouTube until about 10 years ago or something yeah. like that. 12 years, well, not 10 years ago, maybe like 14 years ago. So like originally you couldn't even set a thumbnail. It used to it be gave, like pick. I, I you remember, get the three, yeah, pictures, you get three yeah. options. Yeah. You yeah, still yeah. can do that. Obviously no one does it. But what people used to do was um, work out what the direct you, middle frame of the video was. And then splash that on the screen. And then splash something on the screen for one single frame that you'd never even see when you're watching the video. And YouTube would pick that as the middle this. of the free yeah. options. And that's how you that. would get a thumbnail. Yeah. And then because people were doing that, that's why they introduced thumbnails eventually as an actual, you can upload a custom thumbnail. Kind yeah. of thing. So, so I used to make sure that I was always holding a model in the old showcases where it was the old iPhone one I used to do. I used to hold a model. when I And when I knew I was doing a three or five minute video, whatever it was, I used to make sure that at one minute 30, I would have a model. In shot. Make sure there was a video so there. So yeah. the thumbnail was the picture. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you probably could have. You, I know you never used to actually make them, so it's still valid for you, but you could have done custom thumbnails at that point, but I you just never so, did. Yeah, just you never just never did. did. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. just like, because again, it was those lower effort YouTube things, which I think people find like comfort in. I would love to see more of that in our industry. Mini painting. Yeah. Just to pull that around a little bit into what I was saying about YouTube being like this insulated space, I feel like you see it a lot like, the, if you don't make a crazy title and thumbnail, people won't click on your video. You see that a lot in other genres and people don't get accused of the same thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think most other people, I would actually say even within mini painting, not naming any names, there's some other channels out there that have done some pretty like out there clickbait that is actually, I would say, the original idea of clickbait where yeah. it does not fulfill what it's is very promised. misleading. Yeah, yeah, it's very misleading. Or it fulfills it on a technicality, which to me is still just as bad. Just yeah. as bad. Yeah. Um, and well, and I, I don't. Th I don't feel like that got. From what I see, I don't feel like that gets a lot of hate. For some reason, I'm yeah. I'm not sure why. On some some other channels that might do even something that leans a tiny bit into being like I say, remotely enticing as a video. Yeah. Um, then people kind of flame it in in this industry. They don't really, I don't know, don't really take to it as nice, which I kind of like yeah. in one aspect. And then I'm kind of like, come on, they're just, they're just playing the game. Do you know what I mean? Like they're, they're not being horrible or they're not being like, um, 
really misleading, like genuinely yeah. misleading, then they're not really doing anything wrong. Well, where it stemmed from, from like the podcast side of things is like me and you in particular consume a lot of podcasts outside of miniature painting. And the style of title and thumbnail that we were doing for the longest time was very much fitting with the other genres of podcasting. Mm. But because it was quite a new thing to the mini painting space, it was seen as this like... Yeah, I think even within miniature painting podcasts, of which there are a few out there, especially on YouTube and things like that, when you look at the thumbnails and things, it doesn't follow the same trends as other big podcasts. So we thought, oh, let's... Let's do it in this kind of style so that people know it's a podcast. Yeah. Um, not like, oh, let's mislead people. Because yeah. I don't, th even with like. Well, I stand by the fact that we've never misled anyone. I don't anyone. think we've ever <laughs> misled anyone on, on like titles and thumbnails and things like that. Yeah. Um, the fact is, I guarantee that almost any creator that you watch would rather just upload a video that's called like new video. <laughs> and then like, and then the thumbnail is just them sitting there. Yeah. But that's not going to get the views. It's not going to get any yeah. views. Yeah. And, and even more so now because the way YouTube works, um, so people aren't really watching from their subscription feed anymore. It's all homepage. It's all homepage. Everyone's trying to copy the TikTok algorithm of having a for you page, which is curated content for you that you aren't already followed following sometimes you are already following them but um, he knows you're going to watch it no one on tiktok scrolls over to the following tab yeah on instagram now it's the same thing you have the option on instagram you have to manually turn it off you can manually you know, on, on, top left on instagram you can click on the logo and you can click following and it will show you a chronological order of everyone that you're following all their posts but that's a new addition for the longest time it's it new -ish. was new-ish it's been around it, they've put it back in for quite a while yeah, yeah. but they for the swapped. longest time it was just this like curated feed and it wasn't wasn't chronological order that's been gone for ages yeah and on top of that it would just be like other suggested the suggested posts thing you had to manually switch off every 30 days yeah yeah so now you can do that no one does it yeah like i begged for ages for Twitter and Instagram to reinstate a chronological order feed. Yeah. Because that's what I wanted. People that I'm following, I want to see their posts in chronological order. I have the option. I don't do it. Because yeah. like, number one, it's an extra step. Yeah. And I guess I'm lazy when I'm flicking through my phone. And number two, that's just how these things work now. So the point I'm getting at is the reason that people are maybe trying to like entice you a little bit more with these titles and thumbnails without clickbaiting you is they're being pushed to people that don't already know who they are a lot more. So they're trying to get their attention. If you're a regular viewer, you already know who we are. Yeah, we could upload a video that's just like, some of the some of the like standard selected thumbnails that we get from YouTube are almost always of George and some of them are quite hilarious. Yeah. I would rather have that and you would probably click on it, but new people might not. So it's just a way that things are going. There's no like, I don't think we or most of the miniature painting world um, of creators has really ever like outrageously clickbaited. There's a few, obviously, but yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's just the way things are at the moment. I'd love to yeah. do it the way you said, but that's just that's just unfortunately how it is, you know. And, and from other people's point of view, we're lucky. We're 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 obviously a company, and we do this as part of the company. Whereas other people, it's like their own personal livelihood yeah, and stuff exactly. like that yeah, obviously yeah. there's this, a lot of resting for them on yeah, a video doing exactly. well yeah, yeah so if you look at the difference being if they click bait you quote unquote or not and the difference is a hundred thousand views um makes then a big they're probably to gonna life. they're probably got to an individual person on an individual channel they're probably gonna do that like um for us obviously we do need this to do as well as it can to support itself um but obviously we have other means and things like that. So I, I think we, we can be a little bit more casual with it. Yeah. Um, which is what we're yeah. wanting to do. Other means such as the Siege Studios Patreon, where you can support the podcast and help keep it free for you every single week. And we have a little, uh, little announcement as well. Uh, we are launching a new video series where if you are one of our Patreon supporters, we're launching a new video series called Critique Clinic, where our patrons can submit photos of their models. And me and James are going to be doing a little uh, video series every single two weeks and we're going to go through all of the submissions over there we're going to give you some critique and feedback on how you can improve your models i am very excited i'm that, very excited for that i am very it's excited cool. it's going to be great because we've got some fantastic uh, patrons already who i've seen i've seen on tags and things like that the work they've done from our tutorials so 
I'm really, really excited to look at people's models. So it's Can fun. I submit one without being a patron or do I have to sign up as well? Or? No, you've got to I sign think, up. I think we do a special staff one in the future. That'd be a good one. A staff yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah staff episode. Be good. That'd yeah. be good. Yeah. If you enjoy listening to these podcast episodes every single week, I'd like to ask that you could please do us one small, tiny favor in return and hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your podcast app. It takes only two seconds and it really, really helps us out and it allows us to bring you these episodes for free every single week. Thank you so much. Back to the episode. So for every single uh, month this year, we've been doing a fun little painting challenge uh, with the paint perspective community, so to speak. And uh, this month for April is a Procalypse. And the idea for this was to paint something to add to your existing army and then share with us a photo of what you've added and maybe the force itself. And uh, we're going to feature some of them uh, in the episode today. Yeah. It was a bit of an open month, really, wasn't it? It was like yeah. a bit of a free-for-all. Get, yeah, get to add to your army. Uh, unsurprisingly, the most popular one we've done so far, because I think everyone can kind of get involved. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, get involved good. They'll be on screen for the uh, for the viewers on YouTube. Um, I'll pick out some of these as well. Uh, one of my favourite ones was from Nas Paints, who done some uh, some like green. I don't know if it's a custom scheme or not. Some Space Marines. But, I think uh, was it wasn't it um, Sons of Medusa? Possibly. So, yeah. I'm not too familiar with it, but uh, some really trims, great looking models. Black trims. Black trims. Green. Yeah. Um, White emblem. I'm yeah, pretty sure it's is. Sons of Medusa. Yeah. No, they look great. They've got some like cool blue glow on Ultra the white Marine helmets. Successor? Uh, Iron Hands. Iron Hands successor. Iron Hands successor. Yeah. There you go. What am I thinking of? There's a green Ultra Marine. Aurora chapter. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Similar. The one. But yeah. not, not the same. Yeah. Um, there was a cool, uh, you know, can't believe I'm going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> there was a cool Raven Guard one. I saw this. I think, I, and I appreciate someone who is not sitting there moaning in the comments that we, you know, we said a few things about Raven Guard that we thought they were boring or whatever. They were like, "Do you know what? I'm actually just going to paint the banging Raven Guard on it, <laughs> send it to them." So they have to say it looks little cool. mic drop. Uh, yeah, I think it looks really cool. Um, there's like a, a lot more like red a splash of red in there than I've seen on on uh, Raven Guard on the trims and things. Um, so they have made them a little bit more interesting. A lot of red and green and things like that. I'm never going to complain a bit about red. Yeah, yeah, and I think. You know, if I if I believed that they'd done this in the entire reaction to our uh, episode, I would think that the red and green was done on purpose to try and sway us to make us like them. But uh, I don't think that is the case. And yeah, I think it just makes them look uh, a little bit cooler. Well, I've got to give it up for Brutus from our community because he... Oh, what was my one? I didn't say the name. What was my uh, one? That was that Bohemian Knights. Bohemian Knights. So yeah, I've got to give it up for Brutus who from our community who absolutely smashed it with an Imperial Fist. A solid name and also a solid miniature. Um, the lighting on this was really awesome. I absolutely loved it. Um, and just also the vibrancy of the yellow. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, the one thing I did like massively was just the flame effect on the on the flamer. So yeah. I thought it was yeah, really, a- well, really well done. Um, it's quite cool because the top of it's really bright and then you've got like a more of a gritty kind of like lower portion on the model. So it kind of like ticks a lot of the grim dark boxes and also the vibrant sort of finish that I really like so yeah. yeah it's a flamer so it's plus one from me <laughs> uh, okay well if you want to participate in next month's painting challenge for was it May so that's Adeptus Mechanicus it's going to be on screen uh, here somewhere <laughs> and uh, if you want to submit please in the Siege Studios Discord please submit some photos of your models, uh, paint some, ed- anything Adeptus Mechanicus, I anything suppose. Anything Adeptus Mechanicus. Or um, robotic, shall we say? If you want to, look, I'll, if you want to stretch always, the rules. <laughs> as always, I do encourage people to stretch the rules as much as they like. I'm interested to see the technicalities that people try and pull here. Yeah. Um, specifically, most often James. Um, <laughs> always comes up with some twist that we haven't thought of. But if we say to you, it is Adeptus Mechanicus themed. I will let you all run with that and do as you please. Okay. Well, if you want to submit anything for it, uh, Siege Studios Discord, you can submit in there. Please use the hashtag Adeptus Mechanicus, or you can submit on Instagram using the exact same hashtag. Please tag Paint Perspective Podcast as well, and uh, that will ensure that we see your entries. If you haven't been included in this week's, that is not intentional. Uh, It's very, very difficult to find all the entries. Please make sure you use the tags, and uh, that will ensure that we can see it. Yeah, and I think also just to note, obviously this one, we are actually already in May mm-hmm. now. Um, previously, we were doing it as the last episode of the month. Mm-hmm. I think what we're going to do is the first episode of the next month so that we got a bit more time to get everyone's entries because we kept getting 
spit um, over. We kept getting people say like, oh, I submitted mine and, and yeah. Yeah. I didn't get it. And it was like, yeah, because we yeah. sometimes however the month falls, it was like. Different. It depends on how the dates align with yeah. the week of, because uh, the podcast goes on from Thursday, but uh, yeah. we'll align it so that it's like the following week, if that makes sense, at the end yeah. of the month. Yeah. yeah. As artists, we know how time consuming painting miniatures is, especially if you want to achieve a high standard for tabletop or display. Life is busy and we don't all have eight hours a day to paint. Plus, if you're still early in your painting journey, it may feel that you're a long way off ever owning your own beautiful army for your games. For 10 years, Siege Studios has been delivering bespoke miniature painting commissions to collectors and gamers all over the world. We have a world-class team of artists from Golden Demon winners to ex-studio painters, collating hundreds of years of collective experience. Here at Siege, we offer a series of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a favorite character for your display or a stunning gaming army. We pride ourselves on offering well above the industry standard of quality and our customer experience. To see our gallery, learn more about our services and get a quote now, head over to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please leave it in the comments down below on YouTube. Or if you are listening on your audio app of choice, please fire us a DM on Instagram at Siege Studios. This week, we have a question from Iron Scholar who says, I'm looking to switch things up by starting an orc force. I want to embrace the individuality of orcs by having a decent variety in clothing and armor colors while going for more of a menacing and grim dark type of force. So my questions are, how can I create that individuality without a massive amount of customization and work that would slow things down? And do you have any suggestions on how to have the more grim dark slash blanchitsu look in a way that would still have some cool contrast and look great on the table, not just washed out? I've got this. I mean, quite a good example is that Imperial Fist we were just talking <laughs> yeah. about, to be honest. I've got this. So I'm going to segue into Lord of the Rings. I've already done one Gandalf spoof thing in this episode, but I'm just going to basically say that the orcs in Lord of the Rings, they look scary as anything. And one of the things that I really like about orcs typically in Lord of the Rings is that their skin tones are very varied. In 40K or even in Age of Sigmar or Fantasy, I've always seen orc armies because they are a... A mass army with lots of miniatures painters tend to paint them in a very linear uh, i'm going to paint them all the same color to get through the batch which makes sense that's totally understandable what i think would really help with your force is to pick some different skin tones so some desaturated green so maybe some vibrant green even some near brown kind of olive drab kind of color skin tones and you can still paint 20 in a batch or 20 or 30 in a batch or whatever but then what you do is you, obviously on top of that, you paint all the armor colors, the extra details, all those things. But then what you do is when you make your squads, you vary up all of those batches that you've done. So you actually have a very varied ragtag looking force. And that's before we talk about painting style, like for example, doing more of a blanche, it's your grim dark. You can sponge the skin as well, potentially in some areas, just to add a little bit of, not texture, but like a variance in kind of the way the tone is. Um, if you're doing weathering as well, you can do sponging on that as well. I think there's lots of ways that you can add really subtle, hyper detailed weathering quite efficiently quite effectively on top of doing the variance of skin tone which i think it makes them really interesting um, and that should give you quite a quite a, an evil aggressive varied force which will just give you something a bit different and give you an orc army that doesn't look like a lot of orc armies that i tend to see i think as well if you batch coat a lot of the base coating steps and then add all of that variance sort of towards the end it's not going to slow you down too much mm -hmm. so for example if you're doing so you're base coating all of the skin for the whole army green in one go, but then you start mixing it up of like what washes you're using to yeah. wash all of the skin. Okay, yeah. I'm going to use a slightly more purple one for this, a slightly more brown one for this, you know, dark green on the other one. That's You're still just doing a wash yeah, and you're doing it over the same base color. So it's not slowing you down, but you are going to start adding some like subtle variants to make them all stand out apart from each other. Yeah, And then when you get to armor, like, you know, you're going to get white squad markings, you're going to get green squad markings, you're going to get blue squad markings and so on. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a, it's a difficult uh, thing to think about really when you want a unified look of an army, but you want things to also be individual and not look out of place with each other. Like, because I think about it sometimes like when, even when we paint like space marine armies or, or something like that, realistically, as like realistic as you can think when we're talking about Warhammer 40k, <laughs> um, you know, if we're doing uh, a group of Marines and they've all got, like some of them have got their some flesh showing or something like that, 
We might vary some of the skin tones, but if you were doing a Caucasian skin tone, you'd probably use the same recipe on both of them. Chance, I mean, us three straight away sitting here don't have the exact same skin tone. You know what I mean? So chances exactly. are that isn't that realistic, but we do it just because it's easy to paint. But like, I think with things like Orcs, it's like you could go f so unique with each individual one and it still actually makes sense as well. Because but it works, like, yeah. But then the point is how much extra work do you want to put in? Because yeah. you could do everything quite individual and it still look okay. Well, that, Especially with what... like, if you were doing like all the cloth and stuff in like just neutral tones, even though it was all different, like some browns, some beiges, uh, even some just like washed out other colours, it'd all look fine next to each other. And it'd be realistic because they're all likely going to pull things from all different areas. Mm -hmm. um, but how much time do you want to put in? Yeah, that's so, exactly it. Yeah. yeah. So I think the thing with the washes is good. If you make your base coat a bit lighter than you might normally, so that the wash really makes a difference, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. Our closing tradition on the podcast is a segment that we call Hobby Hacks. This is where we share a little closing hack with you that you can incorporate into your painting. I thought it'd be fun this week if we took a suggestion. Joe did it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be fun if we uh, took a submission from the viewer this week. So, okay. Neil Trevathan says, love the podcast. A hobby hack for when you're transferring paint from GW pots to dropper bottles. Well, no wonder George picked this one. I know, yeah. <laughs> Unsurprising. It's what was the account name? Neil Trevathan. Is that like a anagram for George Coleman? Or <laughs> Well, he says, love the podcast, a hobby hack for when you're transferring paint from GW pots to dropper bottles. Instead of using a plastic funnel, take a small triangle of baking paper and fold it into a cone funnel. That way you don't risk cross-contamination. Plus you can roll slash squeeze the funnel so you don't waste any paint in it. And to add on to that, all your offcuts from when you're making your DIY Tupperware TK Max wet palette can make your funnels. That is brilliant. That's good. To be fair. I actually have a lot of uh, off cuts of uh, baking paper. So that's, I've, I've got them in a drawer, like piled up. Yeah. I'm like, I've one day I'll design. find a useful yeah. one. Yeah. One day I'll need that triangular wet palette. Yeah. 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 There you go. I yeah. like it. I like that's it. That's very good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. Please do support the show by checking out all of the links in the video description. Check out the Onyx painting lamp. It's our favorite painting lamp. And we've got a link to the Patreon and the Discord down there as well. We look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> <laughs>